uh, second crush pot, brush pile and the second clearing. Uh, there used to be trees all the way out to that point. And uh, the second dam is going to go in here. We'll drive by the next clearing over there and I'll show you the first dam. Uh, but that that's all cut up stuff, maybe piled up and burned. This is all usable wood. Uh, it can be baited to um, whatever really because the Amish use it. So we're probably going to sell it to them. And uh, today I have to take the wood that I've cut way down into the valley there and haul it back up so we can do other stuff with it. So that's the, uh, the brush pile. break on here and then we'll just use this thing as a size comparison and what you're seeing is from here to there this image doesn't really show you how wide it is around and how packed in it is and everything so this thing it's a ton of wood in there it'll take forever to burn but now we're gonna go down into there which is really steep and has some really sketchy kind of bumps and turns to it To a nice open clearing with a lone tree and of course an outhouse. So in the summer when all the grass is growing all of this will just be tall grass and a trail that goes out through here and into the forest there but in the winter and uh, fall and stuff it's all cut down and it's just a big open field. A bald eagle right there. Quite a few of those around here. Very beautiful birds. So here's the trout stream. It has a T up there. It runs all the way down and uh, basically just keeps snaking through this valley all the way to wherever it's going. And this, it's not very high right now. Uh, everything's kind of frozen and it hasn't rained in a little bit, but there's that. Of course, we had to put some furniture out here just because uh, we need some place to relax. Here we come to our first ravine crossing. Right now it's winter and there's not really any water running through it. So 
that was pretty easy but when it gets uh, uh, current flowing and everything just gets all super mud uh, it can be a difficult time trying to get up and over it because you're just sliding around but take a look at how I don't, I don't even know if this will pick it up very well but how deep this valley is it's very very high up there on the walls it just keeps going and going Tons. I'll show you some better ones later, but there's tons of these random uh, cliff formations. That's a pretty small one. See another one up there, and another one up there. Uh, up a little farther, there's an actual solid wall, which is kind of cool. But not even 30 seconds from the previous crossing, we have another crossing, so let's go over that now. there there's an actual uh, solid cliff wall um, and that one's pretty cool there's a whole point off there that uh, I made a little uh, campground thingy on the whole solid wall up there but on the left side up here farther there's another chunk of solid wall and then up farther there's a solid wall that goes even lower like down to the ravine bottom and there's uh, caves in there where the coyotes like to hang out So here's a overhanging cliff face that actually comes out quite a bit and it comes down pretty far to the river valley which is kind of cool and there's uh, quite a few of these along here there's another one literally just right there that one's pretty pretty much a little bit smaller than that but let's walk up here and just uh, take a look at what kind of rock and everything this is so this might not look it but this uh, edge here, where it goes up, it's it's at least a 45. It's a very, very steep angle. It's one of those where you have to actually like crouch forward and grab stuff on the way up just to get up there. But in some of these, there are coyotes that hang out in little caves underneath. So uh, let's go see if there's any of these caves. Coyotes are pretty nocturnal. They like to come out during the night. You don't really see them during the day. And uh, generally, they are more afraid of you than you are of them. So, I, I mean, don't if you see one, don't approach it, because if you see it during the day, chances are it's got rabies or something. They don't come out unless there's something wrong. But, like, like this. I'm literally trying to, like, step through here like I'm a goat. You can already see how much lower the uh, gator is down there. Oh, my feet are slipping. This is all loose rock up here. 
is a nice overhanging cliff formation. Now this this rock is not very stable stuff. It it breaks apart. It you know it's got so many fissures and cracks. It's nothing that you'd like want to build a permanent shelter under or anything. So that could be me if I'm not careful. All right. Turn the parking brake off. Shove it back in neutral. And four wheel drive. Here we go. no way to avoid it with uh, how steep this is but occasionally I'll drop a log or two uh, but here's an example of when it's all actually caked over with ice and then this is that cliff wall that I was talking about earlier that's pretty much just a like that's a nice section of just straight wall I might get soaked here I don't know how thick this is or anything yep see if I step too hard on that, I'm gonna fall through. So let's maneuver my way across here. Because there's a lot of really cool rock formations and other stuff around here. Oh, that you just can't see very well with a bunch of trees in the way. So check out how awesome all this is. There's a whole bunch of little uh, caves and hideouts where animals hide in. And then uh, there's more caves up there where the coyotes like to live. And then there's a, a hole up there. I'm not sure what lives up there. Maybe bats or something. And then uh, obviously you got the stream that runs through here. So plenty of water for all the animals. Well, let's, uh, let's go take a poke at this cave up here and just see if I can see anything, hear anything. There's another little one right up there. Try to go up like a mountain goat. Ooh. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it one handed while holding a camera. I'm sliding down. There we go. Now we're up. So, I got a light on here, but. Well, shoot, uh, my battery died literally just as I got up to that. Uh, that little uh, cave in the cliff there. So unfortunately I couldn't show you guys anything inside there. Um, uh, there's another, if you can see it, another little one right there. Right there. And then all sorts of little ones throughout here. But I guess uh, for now I'll just continue on my way and maybe one night I'll sit out here and just wait, see if I can spot some coyotes or anything. There's another little cliff, or a, a cave right in there if you can see it. And then there's some other little ones up there that the coyotes like to hang out. There's another little crossing.
So this isn't a ravine crossing. The ravine is in here, but this is a runoff from the farm fields that are up there. So it's still a little bit rocky and tippy right here. And then for the longest time, up until I'm guessing regular sanitation services came around, uh, people would, especially in farm uh, country areas, they would dump their garbage just out in the field and in the woods. So still, if you look around here, there are still remnants of, like this is a giant steel bucket that's uh, been in here for quite a while, all the trees have thrown around it. And uh, most of it is still pretty much there, it's intact. Now, now, hopefully, as you can tell, we're starting to go back uphill. The ravine's gonna run along back down that way. We're gonna go uphill, meet the farm field, and then run the field back uh, to the property where I'm gonna dump these logs off at. Instead of me having to sit here and pull all this out, 